something went seriously wrong with that railway strike. Where were the traffic jams of all time? The crowds milling about. People walked to their work. The go-getters ran. And means of transport we'd all forgotten came into their own again. Many firms closed down for the day. The thousands of motorists left their cars in the garage. Some of our cameramen arranged their own transport. Mr. Marples was up early, seeing for himself how the emergency plans were making out and setting an example by using his own built-in power units. Someone who doesn't always see eye to eye with the minister, TUC General Secretary George Woodcock, had tried to avert the strike, but there was no stopping the railwaymen. NUR Secretary Sidney Green and his executive said the last minute efforts had been a waste of time. So the strike was on. It was a terrible day for the pigeons, and the railways up and down the country were brought to a standstill. As the railwomen's leaders said all along that they didn't want to cause chaos, they can't have been disappointed to see that there wasn't any. The London Underground, except for two or three ghost trains, observed the strike. Steam locomotives were kept warm to obviate delay when the one-day strike ended. In all this, who never had it so good? Obviously, the patriotic lads who stayed at home. Golf courses did Sunday business that Wednesday. On the Welsh Harp, dinghy sailors were out in force. Nor did the fish get any rest. Gardeners' wives pretended this was routine. In Whitehall, the government's business went on as usual. Many special car parks were full. And by this time, official circles were congratulating themselves on how smoothly it was all going. But it probably cost the railways nearly a million, and the country as a whole, heaven knows how much. If there are more one-day strikes, it may be very serious. But never despair. Anything Marples can do, he can do better.